So it's that time of month again. What? Well, for the monthly accessory reviews. Oh. <laughs> what did you think I was talking about? Well, on the lunar calendar. We're coming up on a full moon. You know what that means, right? Oh! <laughs> Monty looks disappointed. <laughs> Monty, can you do it? So in this video, we're gonna tell you what we think about the Pataka carbon fiber watch spans, the modern and retro, the Aura watch strap, which is something that is supposed to track your body composition, the Spigen Power Arc Arc Field Wireless Charger, the Rhino Shield 3D Impact Screen Protectors, the Rhino Shield AirPod and Pro Cases, and the Yolo Guardian. Yolo! Out of this grouping of products, Val, which one was the worst? The Moth Wallet. Which was supposed to be in this video, but we took it out because we have to do its own video because it's just so good. No, it's not. Now, before we get on with this video, remember, nobody paid us to make this video. Nobody paid us to make, say, nice things or bad things about the products in this video. So click subscribe. You're going to get the stuff. Use our links because, wow, you got to support unsponsored, unbiased creators, right? <laughs> Roll the review. <laughs> I'm always very hesitant to get carbon fiber products. Why? Because they always look very, what's the word I'm looking for, Val? Corny. Corny. Carbon fiber, when done right, looks really good. Carbon fiber, when done poorly, which is most of the time, looks just so bad, which is generally most carbon fiber products. Shoddy case fabricators, anybody? I mean, simply carbon fiber, anybody? <laughs> this hesitation also extends to Pataka products, even though they generally make better than average products. Their carbon fiber watch bands have really grown on me. If one of your vices in life is to have an Apple Watch strap for every occasion, then you definitely need one of their carbon fiber watch straps. There's two different models. There's a modern and a retro, and this modern band seriously just looks awesome. And to a certain extent, feels awesome. I personally wouldn't use this strap as my go-to daily strap, but if I needed something svelte looking, well, it would be one of these Pataka products. The first thing you'll notice about Pataka straps is how light they are when compared to other straps made from premium materials. Their carbon fiber strap fitted to my wrist weighs only 28 grams, with the new Apple leather loop being 39. The Apple stainless steel loop is 39 as well. The other watch strap that we're reviewing in this video, the Shoddy Aura strap is only 21 grams. Now that's why to a certain extent, it feels awesome. It's, pr it's a premium look without the weight. Now it may seem like it's a minuscule detail pointing out that this weighs like 10 grams less than other uh, Apple Watch sport loops, but I've been using, my go-to is the sport loop or the MIFA band, so the extra 10 grams from these products is very noticeable. So it's just nice to have something that looks pretty cool, goes with a suit, and doesn't weigh that much. The strap is held together by a small magnetic clasp that comes with a security lock. Sounds very fancy and sounds very secure. It generally works, but if you put your wrist in a bit of flexion, the clasp will come undone slightly, but no matter how much I tried, I couldn't get the strap to fall off. It does feel unnerving every once in a while to feel half of the magnetic clasp kind of come undone, but again, hasn't come off yet. Now, one of the things that you have to do when buying this product is adjusting the strap, and according to the box, it's really easy. Now, why don't I use this as my daily strap? Because it just gets uncomfortable. Most of the edges of the links are chamfered, but my skin still feels like it gets caught between the link. You can definitely feel those edges if you rest your wrist while typing. Now, you guys all know me, I like to work out, and in the gym, it's just as annoying. It's really hard to focus on quality movement when all you can feel is the sweat underneath your strap and your watch strap moving around on your wrist, and every once in a while, the magnetic class feels like it's coming undone. You're like, wait a minute, is my Apple Watch gonna fall off my wrist? And all these things are just big distractions when you're trying to get sweat. But when you put on a suit, damn, this is awesome. Now one of the things we've been doing on our fitness channel is reviewing smart waist scales. And honestly, it's kind of a gong show. Why? Because all well, the measurements are kind of all over the place. Now, according to some of the scales, I'm obese and I need to lose weight while others, I think kind of get within the ballpark. And then there's products like the Aura Strap, which are just completely wrong. So the Aura Strap is an interesting idea, but it really kind of fails on two accounts. The first one I've already touched on, but the second account, well, the usability of the product. Apple's products are well designed and simple to use. The Aura strap is clumsy and terrible to use. There's two straps that you need to adjust in order to fit the device onto your wrist. That's annoying. Nothing like pulling your Apple Watch off the charger and having to spend twice as long to put it on. Now that wouldn't be a problem if the product, you know, felt nice, but it doesn't. You get to wear this chunky sensor all day and if you're working on a computer, it just gets annoying over time. Add to the fact that the strap is smaller than the normal Apple Sport Loop and is, well, the build quality is worse as if you pull too hard, the nub that's supposed 
supposed to stop the strap from coming out from the other end, well, it just comes off. Now to do a measurement with the Aura strap, you need to turn on the app on your Apple Watch. You need to push starts. Then you gotta push the button on the sensor unit and then put everything on the meaty part of your thumb. Now the first time doing this is gonna be pretty cool because it makes a bunch of noises as the Aura strap does use sound generated by the sensor unit to generate how many rolls you have on your body. Now if the reading works, which is about 50% of the time, the Aura strap will tell you how much muscle mass you have and how much fat you have on your body, how much protein's in your body, the visceral fat, the lean mass, minerals, as well as your BMI. All this sounds great until you realize that you manually have to trigger this thing. It doesn't automatically add data to everything. That just really adds to the clumsiness of the product. Like you literally have to carry this really unusable thing with you all day. It's just useless. Honestly, this data doesn't need to be taken multiple times a day. Like it just doesn't make any sense. Like with this product being so clumsy, you might as well just bring your smart scale with you all the time. And we're reviewing these. This one's not good. <laughs> mm -mm. It's so expensive. And how heavy is it, Val? Pretty heavy. <laughs> But none of my complaints wouldn't matter if the data collected was accurate. My aura strap for a month told me I had 6% body fat, which is not true. Some days it would tell me my lean mass was actually more than my actual weight. And also claims I have 1% visceral fat, which is not a good thing, I don't think. But I don't know. Other products say I have 8. Seriously, the aura strap tells me I have a lean mass of 173.5 pounds, and I've got 6% body fat, which isn't true. Um, I look good but not 6% good. Actually, 6% doesn't actually look that good. That's just like bodybuilder, freaky shredded, yeah. right? That's too much. Seriously, if I had 6% body fat, we wouldn't be doing this video right now. We'd be taking a ton of photos so that I could build a catalog for those. So for the next five years, I can just post on my Instagram because well, Influencer life. Like, 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 like. Heck, I even posted this on Instagram and or customer service got back to me asking me to send my info, but I never heard from them. So I have no idea if they care. <laughs> now, after all that, despite being a pinnacle of human leanness, the Aura app still tells me that I'm overweight based on my BMI. So the data doesn't work. So at the end of the day, don't get this Aura strap. If you need these types of body measurements, go with one of these body scale things. We'll tell you which one is best once we finish uh, reviewing them. Apparently, if you drink way too much one day and not enough water, you can lose four pounds. I've discovered that this week. Right, Val? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was terrible. Anyways, I bought one of these Aura straps uh, for Val as well, and she stopped using it after day. Like, why? <laughs> it was so bad. So bad. Like, it even looks ugly on. Like, it's so chunky and uncomfortable. Chunky. I didn't like it. Like, seriously, tech should be easy to use. The Apple Watch is a beautiful thing. It just, just works. It just goes on your wrist, and this thing just... It's terrible. I'm so annoyed I spent almost $300 on everything. Now onto the Spigen Power Arc charger, and we totally forgot that we had this charger. It was sitting in our box of random stuff to review, and we only came across it while trying to find the stupid moth wallet packaging. Now Spigen's Power Arc Field Magnetic Wireless Charger is one of the first MagSafe looking chargers that came out for the iPhone months ago. That's pretty great, right? Sort of. You kind of get the simplicity of attaching a wireless charger to the back of your iPhone magnetically. It's, you know, not bad, but you know, it's kind of frivolous in a sense. But do you really get the benefits of actually using a MagSafe charger? Short answer is no. Ooh. <laughs> This is just a Qi charger baked into a round magnetic puck. The housing is just plastic, so it doesn't have the heft of the Apple MagSafe charger, so it's gonna move around. Now, if you think that you can use one of Spigen's MagSafe stands to keep it in place, well, you can't because the Power Arc Field charger is larger than the MagSafe charger. So is there anything really redeeming about this $50 charger speed, you might think? Well, since it's a Qi charger for the iPhone, it's capped at 7.5 watts. We did a bunch of 10 to 50% iPhone 12 mini battery charge tests, and it took 50 minutes. It takes the Apple product around 30 minutes, so it's definitely not as fast, but it is definitely better against other Qi chargers. We compared it against speeds from all the multi-device chargers that we tested recently, as well as all the car Qi chargers that we tested. The average charge speed for all those products and across all those videos is about 90 minutes. So 50 minutes for the Spigen Arc Field, well, is pretty good. Honestly, at 50 bucks, you just might as well go with the Apple MagSafe charger. And I will say that Spigen overprices their stuff on their website, so it might be cheaper Amazon, but still, at an MSRP at 50 bucks, just go with the MagSafe charger. So if you're finding these reviews useful, you can support us by using our Amazon links to buy anything you're gonna buy on Amazon. You can also support us through Patreon. 
And you can give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel. Hit the notification bell so that every single time we produce an unbiased, unsponsored video, you get notified. So between our go-to Apple Watch screen protectors from Flow Lab and the Rhino Shield 3D plastic ones, which one comes out on top? That's a loaded question. Why is that, Valerie? <laughs> well, it's like comparing Coke versus Pepsi, LeBron versus Jordan. Jordan. Bro pull-ups versus gymnastics pull-ups? Gymnastics! <laughs> Glass is going to look better, but plastic is going to last longer. The Rhino Shield 3D Impact Screen Protector for the Apple Watch is basically a tiny version of their screen protector for the iPhone. The first thing you have to figure out is how to get it on, because putting things on tiny screens is pretty terrible. Installing the Rhino Shield 3D Screen Protector was harder than I expected. It comes with a handful of installation tools, which to be honest, were all very helpful. It seemed like a pretty straightforward install until I actually got the screen protector on the watch and realized there were so many bubbles. I tried pressing them out with this little card thingy that Rhino Shield provided, but that didn't work. So I tried lifting the screen protector to get the bubbles out and stick it back on. That usually works with other products, but that also didn't go how I expected. The adhesive on the screen protector is really strong. It was surprisingly hard to peel it back off once it was on the screen. And especially since this isn't glass, the plastic would bend and I felt like I was going to either dent or deform it before it would actually peel off. But once I finally got it off, I realized I had to hold the screen protector off the screen and slowly slide the card over the screen, pressing down as I was moving up. Now the key is to make sure you're slowly pressing down while holding one of the edges off of the watch so you don't get any bubbles. By doing that, I didn't have to adjust anything afterwards and it went on very smoothly. The first thing we did notice was the clarity of the screen protector. Some of Rhino Shield's earlier products tend to change the clarity or have kind of like a yellow tinge to them. Now the Apple Watch we're showing in the install is different than the one that we tested with. This is Aaron's daily Apple Watch and he's been using the screen protector for almost four weeks. And you can definitely see the wear on the product. There are three things that we noticed. The most obvious is the giant scratch across the face of the screen protector. This is plastic. The 3D impact screen protector is gonna scratch around four on the most scale, whereas a glass screen protector is gonna scratch between a six and a seven. Now, one of the less obvious things that we noticed are the dents on the face of the screen protector. The 3D impact screen protector doesn't have the same rigidity as glass, so putting a bit of pressure with your fingernail is gonna leave a slight mark. Impacts caused by bumping your Apple Watch in the corners of door frames will also leave a mark. That's evident in the breaks between the black silk print and the clear portions of the protector. And the last thing is the fingerprinting. The oleophobic coating isn't as strong as stuff from Flow Lab, so you'll find yourself wiping your Apple Watch on your pants or your shirts <laughs> more often to remove body grease. Ugh. So Aaron, when would you use this? Honestly, I would go with the 3D Impact Screen Protector with the aluminum cased iPhones and the Flow Lab one with the stainless steel. Mostly because with the aluminum ones, it's a little cheaper, it's gonna get banged up a bit more, so you want something that can take a lot of hits. So that's kinda where I would kinda put those two things together. So when Aaron gave me this case, I was so excited to use something colorful rather than an all clear polycarbonate or plain black case. But that excitement went away pretty quickly once I stepped out of the office and dropped my phone as I was getting into my car. Again, sorry Aaron. <laughs> I feel like I'm perfect for this job though. Real usage? To be honest, there isn't much to the YOLO Guardian. It's a thin double layered case. TPU on the inside, wrapped in a polycarbonate shell with a matte finish. When it comes to design, the YOLO comes in three different colors, pink, purple, and black. I'm not a huge fan of the polycarbonate that comes off the TPU case because I find that I'm always playing around with it and in my opinion, it just makes the case look cheap. This case has shiny silver buttons that are actually terrible. They're very loose and wiggle around when you're holding your case. The build quality of this case isn't that great. You can definitely see the seams along the bottom of the case. The camera cutout has a black rim around it, which prevents the flash on your camera from ruining your photos. And the port and speaker cutouts are good. It also has a matte finish, which according to YOLO's website, will help against fingerprinting. And though it does, they forgot to mention that you'll be able to see every single tiny little scratch from your keys, coins, drops, or even your nails. When it comes to protection, this case is drop rated to four feet. I've dropped my phone in this case a couple times, and though the case looks pretty banged up, my phone is perfectly fine. It's got raised edges along the front, which help with face first drops, and it also won't allow your phone to slide around easily on its front. But the matte finish on the back is pretty slippery. 
And speaking of the matte finish, it's going to make handling with this case a little annoying. Like I said, it feels slippery, but the TPU edge that wraps around the front of the case and the bottom right side will help with getting a much better grip. Now in the last monthly roundup, we touched on the AirPods case from Catalyst and mentioned that it kind of replaced the ones that, well, we were using from Rhino Shield. Now, I went back to the Rhino Shield product and have been using it for the last few weeks and I still really like it, but I don't think it unsurps the Catalyst product for how I use my AirPods. Unsurps? Yeah, like take pole position by force. <laughs> I know the definition of usurp. I'm unsure if you know how to say usurp. Unsurp. Hmm. Salmon? <laughs> the biggest thing for me when compared to the Catalyst case is that there's still a chance my AirPod buds will pop out. Because of that reason, I haven't thrown around my AirPods around as much, so Monty hasn't been as worried standing by my bag. The case has been certified to meet mill standard A10G, so the charging case is going to be happy, but the buds, well, again, cap comes off, they might come out, you might lose one. Now, Rhino Shield claims that the product is scratch resistant, but it's kind of a funny way how they say it, as they say the scratch resistance comes from the cushioning of the product for your AirPods and the outer shell is there to keep the case scratch free. So let that sink in. Rhino Shield is saying that your covered AirPod case won't get scratched. It's not that the case is scratch resistant, is that your AirPod case won't be scratched. Okay, so we're gonna try something new. Collective face palm in three, two, one. <sighs> <laughs> Now, with that being said, I will say that the Rhino Shield product is better designed than most of the two-piece cases that we've used, as there isn't a sticker of any sort that keeps the cap on the AirPods. It doesn't feel loose from my day-to-day -day usage. From an access standpoint, we had no issue with port access, wireless charging, and because of the two-piece design, the case maintains a satisfying click when you open the cap. The status light is visible through the case and has kind of a neat diffusing effect. The only thing that we can't get to easily is the sync button. The case also comes with a custom this thing. I'm not gonna say it because I'm gonna pronounce it wrong, which is still something I don't understand why companies include because I never ever want to hang my AirPods on my pants or outside of my backpack. The finish on the case is quite smooth, so it'll come and go in your pant pocket with no issues and there are no sharp edges. If you're wondering about some of the other AirPod cases that we've uh, used and reviewed, do check out that top 10 video. Now, of all the AirPod products that we've used over the years, there's one feature that is kind of a bigger draw for this type of accessory, which is being able to swap uh, different colored caps or bottoms. I like being able to mix and match the colors with my accessories. It's kind of the same reason why I like the case of silicone sleeves, because I can really make it my own, and if I really, really wanted to make it my own, I could get my case stamp with at least five letters, like my first name, or Monty's name, or if Val really wanted to, part of her name. With all things considered, this is a decent product for 25 bucks. If you just need something to make your AirPods look a little different or just protect it from scratches, <laughs> um, get it. It's definitely easier to swallow and commit to, I guess, uh, when compared to, you know, the Catalyst Total Protection that we last reviewed. So for the next month, which one should we review? What do you think, Val? The Loopy product, oh. oops, and Scipio, or the Extoria Defense product? I kind of want to do the Loopy. Guess we're doing the Loopy. So that's all we got for this video. Questions, comments, leave them down there. If there's stuff that you want us to check out, I'm definitely going to get the Belkin updated charger, multiple charger thing. Um, I'm trying to figure out when to review this fitness tracker, whether it be on our fitness channel or on our uh, this channel. Again, support us through uh, Patreon. Get your stuff through our Amazon links. Again, this we don't take any money for doing any of this stuff. We're viewers, not influencers. And if we get enough likes, I'm going to make Val stop wearing sunglasses during the videos. Please. I don't want to wear these anymore. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Now, wait, let me sit down. <laughs> okay. Very, very, what's the word I'm looking for, Val? Corny. Carbon fiber. <laughs> so if you're finding these reviews useful, be sure to support us through our Amazon links because Why? <laughs>